Finally tonight, a story produced by our online team for our website as part of our 9-11 anniversary coverage. We think it's worth sharing with our broadcast audience. My name is Jonathan Hyman. I am a documentary photographer. Uh, I've spent the last 10 years, five years full time since starting with the day of the attacks, documenting the uh, vernacular response that people made through artwork uh, in response to the September 11th attacks. It was this kind of rare intersection that Americans in the past haven't had much practice at. Uh, we haven't been subject to wars very often on our own territory or attacks on our own territory. And I realized that there was this very interesting intersection between people who wanted to express their private emotions but do it publicly. And so once I realized what I was going to do, I made a conscious choice early on to not come into New York right away. And I had it in my mind already from watching the news and speaking to people that everybody with a camera was at ground zero. So, so I decided that what I would do was focus on what was happening, uh, you know, 50 to 200 miles outside of New York. Uh, I was seeing all kinds of very interesting things appearing on the side of the road and in public places right where I live uh, in Sullivan County, New York. It was very important for me to show a broad range of expression and sentiment. There's a picture um, that has a very aggressive uh, uh, missile in the shape of, in the shape of, it's an American flag in the shape of a missile flying into Osama bin Laden's head. He's got horns. He's clearly being depicted as the devil. So there are everything from that kind of very aggressive, angry sentimentic to other things that are um, more about uh, healing, love, and peace. And for me, my goal was to simply say, this is what I saw, here it is. There are many different ways in which I came to take a picture. Uh, sometimes I would pick an area and drive around if I suspected that that area would, would, would have murals or people with tattoos. I would go to fire stations, police stations, ambulance buildings, uh, American Legion halls, places where people will have been, would be likely to have either known about some kind of 9-11 uh, response in public or they might know someone who did. And so these kind of informal conversations that I had led me to objects that I would have never found. The uh, subject of this tattoo is a deeply private person. Uh, I was able to convince him that I, you know, my intentions were pretty good. And you know, we made an agreement, by the way, no pictures of his face. He did not want his picture taken from the front. And I honored that, and in the end, he honored me back, and we ended up having a very good relationship. And in fact, this picture on the five-year anniversary went all over the world. Many people in this country looked at the material in my collection, the photographs in my co collection, and people saw red, white, and blue and tended to think that um, either my collection represented some kind of nationalistic expression or uh, other people thought that I was a great patriot because there was so much red, white, and blue. When in fact, it's my contention that many of the people who made this vernacular artwork that I have documented used what was available to them in their popular culture. These are people who, for the most part, with the exception of some of the muralists, not all the muralists, heretofore have not had a self-image as someone who can express themselves in public. They've never really made art, or they don't believe that they're artists or could ever be an artist. So they, 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 they drew upon the things that, that they know. That's what made this so interesting. That public expression of private personal emotion is really a, a, probably the most profound and distinguished element of what I think I saw. Jonathan Hyman's photographs are on exhibit at the Sylvia Wald and Poe Kim Gallery in Lower Manhattan until October 8th.